and welcome. Uh, so yeah, using external dependencies in QGIS plugins is this talk's topic. Uh, some background first. My name is Andro Komi, and I'm working as a software developer at the National Land Survey of Finland, and currently working on the new topographic data production system. You might have seen the uh, talks on Wednesday. If you haven't, you can also check those out. And about our QGIS plugin development, we do, uh, for example, simple map tool plugins for some projects that have a like template project and the background with the layers and just some useful map tools. And for example, our topographic data production system is kind of a more complex where the plugin controls the whole workflow for the user as layers and like the whole system builds around the plugins. And also we have some open source general purpose uh, tools available as well on our GitHub and check those as well. So why would you want to use QGIS uh, plugins with dependencies? For example, if you want to share the, some utility functions, UI components, uh, some useful algorithms, like structure the code better with the Having it in a separate repo could be useful. And also, if you want to reuse existing libraries that you can find open source that works for your use case. And also, for example, if you have like a common use case for like pandas for data processing, you might want to use that as well in your plugin. But in many cases, it might be a problem to have that dependence because uh, you have to have the library available at runtime and often you can't control the client side of things. And then if you have a dependency, you might, uh, you have to have the, like you should expect a uh, correct version of the library. Like you can't work, for example, between major versions that well. And also the using dependencies affects the workflow for the developer and also, in some cases, might affect the tooling that you can use for the plugins. And also important is the platform dependent libraries, for example, Pandas is a binary dependency, so you can't just usually include that with your code, because it might not run on the uh, client's machine. Uh, the different options for the uh, dependency usage could be Dependency plugins, that's a QGIS built-in tool for that, one of those later. And also one example could be client install libraries that you can just request the install or maybe even in some cases do an automatic install. And one example could be bundled libraries with import path manipulation that you can just include a code and use, for example, some import tricks to have that available. And one final example could be isolated imports where the dependency is included in your code with a kind of a different structure that the imports are isolated for the version. So the dependency plugins, it was added in some year or two ago in QGIS. And in that case, you just request a dependency in the metadata and the QGIS handles the dependency management. Uh, in that case, there's a limitation, of course, for one version only per profile. So you have to have a, like you can't use different version for some different plugins. And of course, that's limited to QGIS plugins. So the dependency you are using must be a QGIS plugin and installable on the client machine. For example, you could use a private repository if you have that use case for that. And how it looks in the code, uh, you can often use the dependencies as is because the QGIS handles the, like loads the library in order so that the imports and providers, et cetera, are usable directly in the, in the code as is. And for example, or the client and start libraries, you can notify a user or for a missing library or in some cases, I could try to install automatically. 
of course, this brings some problems that the user might have network access at the time, or there might be other problems not to install the uh, libraries automatically. And in this case as well, there's one version per environment, so you can't have multiple versions available. And in this case as well, if you have like, you can't uh, also install different versions, like if the user has like, say, Pandas 1.0, you can't have the 2.0, like request because it might break other workflows for the user. And in how it looks in the code, you kind of have to use some guards against the imports where you can maybe notify the user that you are missing a library or use some fallbacks in case the library isn't available. Also, in that case, you have to, like in all code paths that you have the import, you have to guard it because you can't have like top level or your imports for that in any, any of the code that gets run initially. Also, this brings the automatically install, maybe even the client installs brings some supply chain attack possibilities. Nowadays, if you install, just request the user to install things from the internet. So, for the bundled code, where you have path manipulation, you package libraries, for example, with the plugin, and use, for example, just path append or some import hooks to provide access to that module at runtime. In this case as well, you only have one version available. So, this is also a problem if you provide a library in this way, and then the user already has another version installed. So this brings problems like what, which one of those gets loaded first, so you can't really trust the version that you have included, because it might not be that version that's available at runtime. Uh, binaries work with this case, but also of them, the runtime platform has to match. So you can't have, you can't bundle, or you can bundle all the platforms in, in case that's, a, that's an issue. Not also for the licensing, it's not often suitable to include the binaries in public repositories for the license. Another way that you can use is an isolated import. In this case, you also package the library within the plugin, but you use the imports in a way that the code refers to the isolated module instead of like a global <coughs> top-level module. In this way, you can use multiple versions, one per plugin, uh, but it works for pure Python libraries only, because in binary dependencies, the module runtime pass, path has to match the compiled one. There are two different options for the uh, bundling. For example, one could be GitHub module use. This is often seen in some QCS plugins. You can use GitHub module to use the, pull the dependency code to the source tree and package that uh, source tree as the plugin so you have the library available. Uh, the repo structure, in this case for the dependency, usually must be in your control because the there are some con constraints on how the code is run at runtime, so you must have the structure that supports good use of a submodule. For example, usually it's the package root is at the repository root, so you have the library at the correct location in the tree. Uh, also, in this case, you have to use relative imports because you don't know the runtime path that the library at is at. So, in this case, all the submodule imports must be relative. Uh, in this case, you can uh, edit the dependency at the same time if you just edit the checked out code in the tree and you can just do the commits in that tree. So, it works quite well for that. And of course, in the build system, it must have access to the repository. For example, if you are behind a proxy and you have to have access to a GitHub, repository that access has to ha happen at the build time or where the code is checked, checked out. 
And then we have uh, another case of the isolated imports with the built-time rendering. This is kind of the approach we have chosen because this helps us to use the like use the Python system as we normally would. We can just install dependencies as is, use the normal imports. And how this happens is that we can transform both our O code and the dependency code at build time to have uh, to be in the plugin module namespace. We use like a vendor subpath in the tree where we put the modules and import from there. In this way, the tooling and the workflow is very well interoperable with the Python packaging ecosystem, so you can just use most pure, poor Python uh, libraries and use those in your code. If it's not anything special in there, like how the dependency uses its imports. Uh, also for this, this is very useful. You can use editable installs for the development, because in this case you have the dependencies as normal uh, Python library. You can just install a repository in your local machine and do the edits there and have it also be the library that is run by QGIS at the development mode. Uh, also for this approach, you need access to the package at build time. For example, if you use pip install for a package, it also works if you have a, like a private repository, for example, so it works really well with that as well. And for the packaging, this of course needs custom tooling. And for that, we have built a developer tool. Uh, here's a link, if you don't know the slides, for the last year's talk and to the GitHub page. So you can check out more of that. So what it essentially is, is a development mode helper with the, like how it handles the, uh, for example, if you develop in a virtual environment, it loads the libraries from that automatically for QGIS. And when you build the same code, it takes the libraries from the current environment, bundles those with the plugin zip file, and it usually works quite well if you use like very well uh, defined uh, modules so that the imports are not anything special. And this is kind of the approach that works best works only for the pure Python libraries. So, for example, when we control our uh, visualized QGIS environment, we often pre-install some binary dependencies, for example, Pandas or some uh, Kerberos authentication libraries, with the QGIS image, and then we have a well-defined version that should, we should expect to be available at runtime for those, and for the rest that are pure Python libraries, we can just use the, like this vendoring type way to include the versions. So with this approach, when we have, for example, a utility library, and we have to have like a major version bump for that, and we change the API, we don't have to change all the plugins that will be installed to the environment. So we can just like do one by one, and it won't break the others. Whereas with the previous, like not isolated import types. For example, if you had that kind of a dependency and you update an API, you have to update all the plugins that will be at that runtime QGIS session. So that it will use the same API. That's, that's all for my talk and I think we have some good time for questions. Hi, thanks, thanks for your talk. Um, did you have to deal with different operating systems? So did you have plugins for both Windows and, and Linux? And if so, did, how did you handle packaging up for, for different operating systems? Uh, for us, the, like the expected runtime is Windows. We have a virtualized Windows environment. But for example, some of our developers use Linux for development. And with, by the, the way we 
built the, like the actual runtime images. We have like a, for example, pandas and Kerberos libraries installed. We like output the, like these are the versions that will be available at runtime. So the user that, that the developer that uses Linux can just take that like for a requirement file. And the, like the development environment should match with the versions. And those will be installed like normally, uh, normal Python packages. And only at the build time, which will happen for the target platform windows, we do the like rendering. So we, we only have that for windows. So it's not, not a problem. But of course, if you, for example, have both like Linux and Windows, it's like you should be able to package both platforms. But we haven't had a use case yet, but it, I think it should work. I had a problem with the installation of the external package through the QGIS on uh, some users' profiles, uh, but uh, it was the situation when the user didn't have any Python installed by his own. Uh, so that was the default Python from the QGIS. And uh, what might be a reason uh, why I couldn't uh, install the uh, external package by the pip, uh, like I use uh, normally uh, through the QGIS because there was an error. And do you know the answer for it? Uh, we have had some problems with like old versions of PIP, for example, That's, that comes with QGIS. So that might be one issue. Like for example, I don't think it has happened in the recent versions, but with an older version that was like PIP 10 point something. So it wasn't able to install some binary packages correctly. It tried to build them from source, for example. And in some cases, there's like the version that comes with QGIS uh, with pip. There's a bundled request library, and it also bundles the uh, uh, certificates. So it might be an, like an old version of the certificates, and you don't have access to a like a new version certificate. Any more questions? Any more questions? Um, I have one more question. Um, do you have experience with like binding dependencies of other languages? So I'm thinking about the uh, JavaScript or Node.js ecosystem because there might be some libraries which could be interested, is interesting too. And also now there is this web assembly coming up where um, programs are compiled so they can be run in a browser. I'm just wondering. Um, maybe they could also be run into in QGIS. So, just wondering if you have any experience with other languages or so. Uh, no, we haven't really have experience with those. Uh, also, one of the differences is, of course, that uh, like in Node.js, you can have like a tree of dependencies. So you can have like it automatically provides a way to have like a different version. If, for example, you use some library that wants a max version something, so it. Bundles like a like if you do not npm install something, so it installs like one main version that works for most, and then it installs like the sub sub trees where it needs the like different versions. But because it's not possible with Python, it's only like one module. If you use like import something, it's always the one version at the runtime. So it's a kind of a different ecosystem for that. All right. Okay, then uh, thanks again for your talk. <laughs> so, one applause. <laughs>